rookie mistakes are allowed for rookies, players, coaches and even general managers. The troubling thing is that when you are in year three you need to set the precedent, not revert back to rookie mistakes. Coach Flores is teetering that line of advancing to the coach that everyone hopes he can become or falling like all other Miami Dolphins coaches before him. Here is what we know. Coach Flores isn't afraid to make moves or call out issues or make a drastic change. We saw that when he fired Pat Flatherty one week into training camp. Flores has to now look at these past three games and notice a trend that is obvious to everyone outside of this organization, the Dolphins have no identity on offense. Flores thought he could utilize two offensive coordinators to streamline the game flow and adapt to players that already had existing bonds and relationships with their divisions. The truth is, this is not working. The game calling is literally making Miami Dolphins fans miss Chan Gailey, and that hurts to say. First and 10 on your own one-yard line and you run a flat-wide receiver screen with no shift or additional blocking coming in to support his player. Just doesn't make sense. In all honesty that was the worst play call I've ever seen, at any level, ever. To do that in an NFL game, where you are up by 14 defies everything that Coach Flores wants to create. Coach Flores, you need to make a move, and just implement one coordinator for this team. To be honest, the decision should be pretty simple, whoever called that play on first and 10 on the one yard line, you just got demoted. Now that Coach Flores has one voice controlling this offense, he now needs to pay attention to what is going on with his offensive line. There have been some previous insights that this group needs veteran leadership, as both veterans from last year were either traded or released, Eric Flowers and Ted Karras. Jesse Davis is a veteran, but if you have an offensive line where Jesse Davis is starting, you know right there that a problem exists. Regardless of how many times the Dolphins will reshuffle their offensive line with players, they can't make up for the lack of knowledge and mentorship a veteran can add. Currently the Dolphins have some cap space to work out a deal with some attractive free agent options. Kalechi Osemele is my primary target and not sure why he hasn't been brought in for at least a visit. Additionally, Isaiah Wilson is asking for a second chance. This is a player the Dolphins traded for and then one week later released because he was immature. He is now, most likely out of money, and asking people to call him by his real name, rather than his previous persona that he came up with. Wilson is a first-round talent, and has great ties with the Dolphins players and linkage to coach Flores Brooklyn Heritage. Wilson already has a tryout lined up with the Colts, and should be an option for the Dolphins, why not? One thing that can't be ignored is the amount of speed that Dolphins have on this side of the ball. However, they are failing to utilize that speed based on the lack of protection up front for extended patterns that are required for these players. If you look at the first half of yesterday's game, the Dolphins failed to throw the ball over 15 yards. In the second half, when they were playing catch-up, they were forced to make those types of plays. That doesn't make sense. Then you look at Jalen Waddle and you just shake your head. He led the team with 10 receptions but for less than 60 yards. They are using him like Jarvis Landry and not Tyreek Hill. On the flip side, Justin Coleman is terrible. He is costing the Dolphins with missed tackles and penalties. On the outside looking in, it would be really frustrating to understand why or how Noah Igbenogany is not starting in front of him. How much worse can Noah be? Coach Flores was a secondary coach for the New England Patriots, he has to see this to determine who are the best players on the field. These few observations would have most likely been brewing in every fan's mind after yesterday's performance, but it is up to Coach Flores to right the ship. This season is far from over, and with high expectations for this team, Flores needs to start making decisions that are best for his team. Keeping the status quo isn't the right thing to do. Flores has to learn to adjust or he too might derive the same fate as his previous predecessors.